Um, so yeah, I'm I'm very grateful for the, for this. I'm grateful to you. I was telling Miss Cheryl at the conference. I'm like, you know, there are different people who I've seen who do carnivore, but it just says so much when someone who looks like me is doing it too. It does add that powerful layer of validation. Um, it just does. It does. You know, especially for a demographic who needs this a great deal. Welcome back to the Black Carnivore channel. Today I want to do something a little bit different. I wanted to show you some black women who are having success on the carnivore diet, but at the beginning of their journeys. I know it's super, super encouraging to see someone who has achieved their goals. They've lost 80 pounds, they've lost 100 pounds, they've done all this stuff. But uh, I think it is also sometimes inspiring to see somebody who is, you know, one or two steps ahead of you, and that can help you to keep going. So I wanted to share people uh, who have, you know, done carnivore for, you know, one, two, three, four, five months and let you see the successes that they're seeing. So today we're going to talk to Lisa who signed up for the 21 day carnivore challenge. And she's going to talk about, you know, the benefits of the carnivore diet for her. She started with keto and then transitioned into carnivore. So some of the benefits she saw, you know, while she was on keto, uh, some continue to occur now that she's on carnivore. So, uh, you know, listen up, enjoy, and uh, let's dive right into it. The journey for, a journey of carnivore began in November of 2021. I did it for a month. And uh, then came the holidays and I was like, woohoo. <laughs> and then after the holidays came, all right. So I really enjoyed how I felt after just one month of being on carnivore. So why don't we just continue to, you know, to continue down this path. I came across your challenge. Um, I did that. Um, and I love the fact that the challenge began on the 10th of the month instead of like right there at the beginning. So it just kind of gave, you know, me this sort of psychological, okay, time to get ready, time to prep. Time to do it. And you were just amazing and making sure that, you know, we had the resources and materials ahead of time so we could get that going. You know, I weighed myself, you know, in the be in the beginning. And I was, and I took pictures. I actually um, submitted, you know, beginning pictures. And I was really moved and um, I really appreciated how receptive people were and how supportive people were. Because again, we talk about supports and we talk about the importance of support. Of support. I saw your um, latest, um, your latest podcast that you had put out about the four things that you did to lose 80 pounds. And, you know, you underscored the power of support, you know, profusely. And I mean, that's, that's, that's what makes a difference in everything. So that was, that was great. And you know, once I started to, in the January challenge, you know, I just started peeling, peeling the layers back. I was like, well, if I don't eat drink, then, you know, I, I don't know why I'm chewing nicotine gum to calm down. I'm from that doesn't calm me down. <laughs> you know, it, it really doesn't. And then once again, you know, go, coming back to you, Ada, you know, having your platform, having the website, having the challenge, I opened up about all of the stuff that I had been kind of walking around with, you know, just, and, um, and I, I was, it was cathartic. And again, the amount of support and reception that I received from folks and, you know, it, it's, I, I'm very fortunate. I'm not worried about, you know, oh my gosh. I mean, I do have moments where I'm thinking, okay, is this ever going to happen? Am I ever going to lose the weight? Okay, whatever. We all have that. I'd like to, I would like to lose another 60 pounds. So I would like to lose 60 pounds, period. Um, I'd started keto and I was about 45 pounds heavier than I am now. <laughs> so even though, and I had gotten as far down to like, you know, to 195 pounds. I mean, that was when, and that was the month that I had quit drinking. That was back in 2019. And it was just like, whoa, you know, I did that sober October. Keto was able to at least help me, you know, get to that 195 marker. And then, you know, the pandemic hit. So, you know, right now, you know, sitting at about, um, I think the last time I weighed, it was like 234. So that was three pounds less than what I'd weighed in for the challenge um, in January. And yes, it's been a couple of, it's, it's been now we're almost at the end of, of uh, almost at the end of February. It's like, well, uh, 
there are a lot of things that I've let go of and I am actually feeling better. Like as I'm sitting here talking to you right now, like I feel like my waist and my midsection, I feel more engaged in my core. Like I'm not having that lower back discomfort. You know, there are little things that I'm noticing. I'm able to stand up straighter and it's easier for me to stand up straight. Um, in the last, uh, what, in the last four weeks, of the last four weeks, 16 of those days, I have had anywhere between 8,000 to 14,000 steps in each of those days. You know, it's, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. And I'm also in a very rare situation where I can literally take a step back and be able to do all of these things. Because a day, I'm going to tell you right now, when I was in the throes of classroom instruction, first off, I'm going to give myself a lot of props because the fact that I was in the throes of classroom you know, instruction and have the courage to, you know, take a month or two off from drinking alcohol or have the courage of saying, you know what, let me see if I can, uh, you know, uh, get rid of, you know, grains and processed food and all this stuff and, and, and really give this keto thing a shot. Yeah. You know, again, one of the things I appreciated from your podcast this morning, when you were talking about the fact that, yeah, there are all these experts, but when it's all said and done, you've got to do what works for you, you know? Earlier in 2018, we had tried keto and it quote unquote did not work because I was doing what they call internet keto. You know, I was just kind of like, well, let me try this recipe. Let me have Pinterest. Let me do it. Um, when I stumbled across dietdoctor.com in September of 2018, that took away a lot of the guesswork. And then of course, having doctors and, you know, nutritionists who, who explain the science, the biochemistry and everything in such a way where it's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I mean, our bodies make sugar. Like it's like, we, there, we, a, carbohydrates aren't essential. You know, gluconeogenesis is our, is our liver's ability to make anywhere from a teaspoon to two teaspoons. So, I mean, like, <laughs> you know, these are things I'm finding out about. So, you know, uh, Dr. Barry, who I saw in your podcast, loved that between the two of you. That was like, Oh my gosh, two people who were smarter than me who were talking to each other. I love it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and Dr. Lustig and, you know, <laughs> Dr. Einfeld, who is sort of like the mastermind behind Diet Doctor. But, you know, there are just so many people. And I'm like, and so I just started to dig and dig and dig. Um, I've stepped away from the classroom and I've decided to pivot. And I'm actually pursuing um, my certification as a medical assistant. And long-term, I want to become a physician's assistant. I want to be able to, um, I want to be able to help people. And what we consume informs our hormonal behavior. It's mm -hmm. like, I can't get enough of it. I can geek out on it all day. Um, so it sounds like in the two months that you have been doing carnivore, you haven't seen like a significant loss on the scale, but you've seen significant loss of inches and an increase in energy. Uh, what else would you say you've noticed? Increase in mental clarity too. Spent I mean, the past month and a half going over about seven chapters of science. I actually took the quiz before I got on with you and um, only missed one question. So, I mean, normally it's like, nice. I gotta take the quiz two or three times. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> But yeah, I'm looking through all of my notes. They are, you know, coherent. Like I could hand you my notebook and say, all right, so, you know, a day, if there's a refresher you need on anatomy and physiology, here you go. You're welcome. Yeah, because my notes are pretty solid and I can get through the material faster. Um, some of the other things that I'm noticing too, I, I'm having, I have a lighter mood. Um, it was tough and don't get me wrong, it's still work because now it's, all right, if there, if there is no nicotine gum, if there is no... And, and, I, and, I, and I have to credit Carnivore for, for helping me to arrive at these places because it's just kind of like, well, but I'm still doing this and it's not helping. And when I get up from eating a meat, you know, eating chuck roast, I feel great. But, you know, but whenever, and, and I also, you know, walked away, you know, gave away that I haven't completely given up dairy, but I did completely give it up in January. And Another note th thing that I noticed <laughs> is the uh, seborrheic dermatitis. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the dairy is the culprit and it, it, it just is. 
Um, to the yeah, dairy is such a problem for skin, yeah. autoimmune stuff, yeah. uh, you know, breathing, asthma, allergies, all of that. Yes, it, it is. It is the culprit. And that was determined. And we had talked about that too, before I started the January challenge. And I was like, yeah, that, that's going to. Um, and then also um, it's helped me to be more aware of how important sleep is, you know, basically eating carnivore. And I also, I feel like I'm healing. I feel like I'm getting better. And that's, that's makes me very excited because Oftentimes there's that belief, Dr. Berg had said this, and you know, I think you know where I'm going with this. Oftentimes people are like, oh, I gotta lose weight so I can get healthy. And it's clearly the other way around. Um, I gotta get healthy so I can lose the weight. I mean, it, it, it's just, you know, my skin, my skin looks good. My hair, actually, you know, I went and got a retouch um, and you know, the, the, the hairdresser was like, wow, your hair's gotten thicker. Like I'm 48. <laughs> You know, where some people are like on the, on the precipice of perimenopause. And I don't know where I am in that world right now, but, um, you know, I still get chilly in the room. I'm not like, oh my gosh, I'm so hot, but I, I'm feeling healthier. There's more clarity. I have more energy and I, I recommend the challenge because, you know, having that layer of support is powerful. And I used to be on high blood pressure. I never thought that I would even say a sentence like that because, because of keto. And before I even lost a single pound, I, I was two months into this plan. I got labs done. You know, my doctor was getting ready to rebuke me for fasting. Oh, you're not supposed to fast. Nah. And then she looked at my labs and she was like, oh my, <laughs> your triglycerides went from 135 to 58. So I'm like, wow, okay. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, and she's like, I'm taking you off amlodipine which I was on for over 12 years. And I remember what you were saying yesterday about, um, you know, your mom, um, both my parents had type two diabetes. I watched my father die from complications at the age of nine. You know, I, I knew what Lasix and Micronase were when I was in the second grade. So, I mean, I have a personal relationship with diabetes and what it can and cannot do. Um, I have a personal relationship with the, you know, with the complications that can occur as a result, you know, watching a parent have a stroke on the last day of school, you know, and you're a little kid and you're like, well, gee, that's my dad. I should be able to play with my father. And obviously it still impacts me because, you know, I'm clearly getting emotional talking about it. But at the same time, I was also emotional when my doctor told me, you don't have to worry about taking this, this medicine anymore. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Cause I knew what road I was going down. I knew what road I was going down. So yeah. thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> So you just heard from Lisa and her inspiring words about getting healthy to lose weight instead of trying to lose weight to get healthy. So if you're ready to stop looking for a quick fix and actually work on healing and uh, getting more energy and feeling better and getting your brain back, then you definitely want to try the carnivore diet. And don't do it alone. Get the support that you need to be successful. Come join an incredible community of like-minded folks who understand the place of meat in in, um, in the diet. So uh, join my 21 day carnivore challenge. The next one starts in just a few days. So don't wait to sign up and uh, go to blackcarnivore.com forward slash challenge. And I look forward to seeing you in the group. All right. Have a great one.